G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory. I would like to apologize for the last video. I was talking about tariffs and governments and I really should have stayed in my lane. I'm an Australian and obviously nothing over there affects me at all and I should have no opinion. I don't have free speech like you guys do. So uh, I really should have known that. It's my bad. I apologize. I will not talk about politics in this video. And I'd like to apologize to everyone who uh, unsubscribed because there are a few people who unsubscribed and my subscribe account went up by 200. But today I do not want to talk about China. I don't want to talk about America. If you want a Ferrari, you don't go to either of those countries. You go to Italy. Thank you. Welcome to the Esatto, the next generation of all-in-one focusers. Whoa, settle down, Mario. I want to investigate the claims that the Asato team make about their robotic focuses, see what problems they're trying to solve, and see why they cost so damn much. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> You see these mirror lockup knobs on the back of a schmidt cassegrain telescope? They are there because of the way the schmidt cassegrain is designed. When you move the focus knob on a schmidt cassegrain the primary mirror actually moves up and down on a rail. So primary focus is actually achieved by the primary mirror moving in and out. But there's a few problems. Firstly, when you focus with the knob the image on screen slightly shifts. If you're zoomed into a planet and you adjust the focus knob it can actually fly out of frame, which is really annoying. Now this is a huge problem for planetary, especially with Jupiter, as you need to refocus slightly on every filter change, and you only have one or two minutes before Jupiter rotates enough to ruin your red, green, and blue alignment. The second problem is that since the primary mirror is on a movable rail, when you slew the telescope or meridian flip the telescope, the mirror has a bit of give, which causes the mirror to flop slightly but that's enough to throw your focus, or worse, your collimation out slightly. Then you need to refocus. These mirror lockup knobs are meant to solve that problem by pushing into the mirror and holding it into place so it doesn't shift. That sounds good in theory, but it means that you can't focus when the mirrors are locked, right? Because the mirror's not gonna move. And in reality, focus changes anyway. The temperature will slightly change the focus over the night. You need to be able to refocus your scope as the night progresses. Also, focus changes between filters. So as you change filters, you need to refocus too, right? The reality is, I've never used these mirror lockup knobs. I need to refocus all the time. And normally I've been doing that with the ZWO EAF electronic focuser, but of course that has all of those problems with image shift. These are the problems that the Asato robotic focuser should solve. And it's gonna solve that problem in theory by moving the focus here. So focus will change by moving the whole image train in and out instead of the mirror itself moving in and out. Now I need to thank the goat of planetary imaging, Christopher Go. Christopher let me pick his big brains recently. I got on a call with him and we actually fleshed out some of these issues and I wanted to ask him about his workflow and how he does things. And he actually told me that he had one of these Asato robotic focuses. And he said he loved it. Now, you can do a lot of maths and research in this hobby to try and find out the things you need or the things you want to put together and combine to get the images that you want. But if you want to shortcut all of that, you just go to someone who's actually doing stuff like what you want to do and you just buy what they have. Just copy them. Bada bing, bada boom. I bought a Ferrari. I bought this one here at Testar in Australia because they're close to me. But if you are one of my many, many American viewers, then you could probably get the same thing at High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific have a massive catalog. I'm always surprised when I go through their catalog and I see the complete range of brands they sell. And it's like a whole range of Premier Lucha stuff and this bad boy. Their newsletter and their YouTube is actually really good as well. But you can use the links down in the description below. Uh, that always helps me. You can tell them I sent you or not because they're affiliate links so they know I sent you. But that really helps the channel and it will really help your astrophotography. I think it's time to park the Ferrari in the garage.
Okay, I think that was a fairly successful test. Uh, the point is that you want to get the focuser in the middle. It's a very short play, uh, but the 220,000 is the midpoint for this focuser. So I set it there. Then I'll use the focus knob to get it set basically as close to focus as possible, and then lock the mirror locks, and we're done. Something to note is that uh, by default, this is M56 out the back, so you need an adapter to convert that to whatever you're using. Uh, for me, it's M54 straight into the QHY stuff. Kind of a nice, large-ish circle for, for DSO work. But for planetary, I need to stop down to M42. So I'll need different adapters to get my planetary imaging rig on this. And then the right spaces. Uh, this is just an example for load. Uh, this is not right at all. Uh, I'll need an extra bit of space in here. I'll probably throw in a rotator. There's no off-axis guider yet, so I'll need a thin off-axis guider because the celestron I'm using was way too big and chunky. It's going to go way over the back focal distance if I put the celestron OAG in here. But uh, I think the QHY L OAG might suit. Not sure. More research required. I think that was pretty successful. I wish I could show you an actual V-curve, some focusing going on so that we know that it works. Uh, but I think, I mean, that looks like it's going to work. And then hopefully Jupiter, but we shall see. And my final thought is why does this stuff cost so much? And the answer really is because it's handmade. Uh, if you look at the Prima Lucha channel, you'll see that they actually build all of this stuff by hand. And it is amazingly built stuff. The build quality is fantastic. There's a signature inside from the person who actually built and tested your stuff. Maybe that's Mario, but it's not mass produced stuff. They're not producing this at the scale for the economies of scale cheapness that we see with some of the other Chinese brands. In some ways, it's kind of amazing that this costs so little. Obviously this stuff costs more than we would like it to, but this gear certainly has the build quality to suggest that it deserves the price it has. And they have the play software and all the extra stuff, the Wi-Fi and all of that stuff I'm never gonna use. Uh, the play software looks super sexy, super amazing. I'm just going to use ASCOM. Like, I'm going to use Nina and ASCOM. But that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.